For the 17th time of the 2024 Hustlin' Rebel baseball season, this is UNLV Baseball brought to you by Learfield and UNLV Athletics. On a balmy night here on Saturday evening, Rebels will be looking to get back on track as they have a, are on a six game losing streak after start, starting the season at nine and one. Been a tough road for the Rebels over the last stretch on the road. We'll talk a little bit about that as we go forward. First pitch tonight will be at 6.05. 57 degrees, we'll talk about the weather. It's been an absolute challenge over the last couple days with very little wind registering two miles an hour right now. Rebels were rained out last night against Santa Clara. Santa Clara coming in from California. The Broncos are currently 10 and five as they head into this Saturday night tilt with the Rebels. Rain got us last night. We're gonna do a double header today, but rain hit us again this morning. If you were uh, a betting man early today, you probably would have bet we would not have gotten this game in tonight, but the grounds crew and Stan Stolte and his staff did an outstanding job to get the field ready. The rain stopped about two o'clock this afternoon, but the outfield aprons were absolute soup out there. So they did a really good job of getting everything dried out. Should have a great night, no more rain in the forecast. Rebels right now stand nine and seven. They are two and three in conference. This last week, they had a game that was canceled on Tuesday for a medical emergency. Game wasn't able to be played and then ended up losing to Cal Poly on Wednesday. So Austin Cates takes the mound for the Rebels tonight. Up first for the Broncos is Michael O'Hara. The right fielder steps in from the left-hand side. Cates delivers inside for ball one. First three up for the Broncos, Michael O'Hara, Coleman Brigman, and Efren Monzo. As the next offering is a taken strike to even up the count at one. Cates out of the stretch. That ball is fouled down the left field line towards the dugout. Chase Dittmar gets over there and records the first out of the evening for the Rebels setting the, reef, the, the Rebels defensively from left to right. In left field, Santino Panaro, right uh, center field, Ryland Charles, right field, Cade Higgins. As a center fielder, Coleman Brigman steps in from the right side. That ball is hit sharply up the middle. Paul Myro makes a diving stab at the ball just off the glove, and that's going to be a base hit for Brigman. So first pitch swinging, Brigman gets one up the middle. Paul Myro can't get to it. The Broncos have their first hit and base runner of the evening. Next up, Efren Monzo. Monzo, a senior, coming into the 24 campaign, hitting 371 for the Broncos. Cates delivers. That's a curveball that's fouled into the dirt. Cates ahead 0-1. Cates comes into the season with a two and two record, four appearances. He started four games for the Rebels. He's got 22 innings pitched thus far. Throw over to first base. Back in time is Brigman. Count still 0-1 with one out here in the top of the first inning. Cates takes a look over at first. Delivers, that ball's in the dirt. Count goes one and one. Set the rest of the infield for the Rebels. Chase Dittmar, the freshman at first, play, first base, uh, excuse me, third base. Paul Myro, the fourth at short. J.P. Heft, the junior at second. Austin Krizik, senior at first. Another snap throw over to first, but Brigman easily back in. The battery tonight working with Cates. Behind the plate, Bailey Seeger, junior. Transfer for the Rebels this year. Cates delivers. That's a tumbler over the top of the zone. And Cates is ahead one and two. With one out. Runner on first. Broncos trying to get something going early. As Cates checks the runner. 
Snap throw over there again. Back in easily. Brickman comes into the game seven for seven on stolen bases. So Kate's keeping a close eye on him. The pitch outside slider misses. That evens up the count at two. On the season, Cates has given up 30 hits, but only 10 earned runs. So he's been the Friday night guy for the Rebels. That ball is slapped down the right field line, actually hits the light standard and comes back into the field. And the count stays two and two. Cates has been very effective for the Rebels. The games that he's pitched and hasn't gotten the wins, hasn't got a lot of run support. So Rebels are trying to back him up tonight. And that ball is missed on a called strike. It was a swinging strike. And Brigman does take off, easily getting to second base with the stolen base. So Monzo goes down swinging for Kate's first strike out of the game. Brigman does get over to first, or excuse me, second with the stolen base. Ben Steck, catcher, steps in for the Broncos. Takes a cold strike on the outside part of the plate. Counts 0-1. Cates is a three-pitch guy with good fastball, 91, 92. Does have a changeup, but his slider is really effective. Brigman, big lead at second. That fastball misses outside to even up the count, 1-1. One and one. Again, Cates has been really effective for pitching coach Corey Vanderhoek and the Hustlin' Rebels. Be looking to keep some momentum tonight in that losing streak as that ball's bounced back behind the plate. Count goes one and two. One of the things that Cates has been really effective is working ahead. When he's got the two strike count on a batter, he's not gonna give up anything in the zone. Cates delivers. That's strong on a miss for strikeout to end the evening. So Brigman singles, advanced to second on a stolen base, stranded there. After a half inning, no runs on one hit, no errors, one left on. We'll come back, set the batting order for the Rebels and the defensive alignment for the Broncos. Welcome back to Hustle Rebel Baseball, brought to you by Learfield and UNLV Athletics. As the Rebels head into the bottom half of the first, Broncos did get a runner on, advancing to second into scoring position. But Austin Cates was able to record his second strikeout of the game. Austin's fourth in the conference in strikeouts. So we'll set the lineup for the Rebels at the plate. Leading off will be Ryland Charles, second, J.P. Heft, followed by Isaac Rodriguez, Kate Higgins hitting cleanup. Austin Krizik batting 362, probably the most effective hustling rebel at the plate this year. Chase Dittmar, the freshman, follows him. Santino Panaro, the left fielder. Bailey Seeger, the catcher, and Paul Myro, the fourth, will bring up the bottom of the hustling rebel lineup. Ryland Charles comes into the game tonight Hitting 278, which you asked him, he would not be very pleased with that. But Rounds had some key hits in a lot of games for the Hustlin' Rebels. Looking to get things started here. As the first pitch by Blake Hammond misses high. Hammond comes into the game with a one and one record, 3.57 ERA on four appearances. As that ball misses low, the count goes two and zero. Oh. 
Charles hitting from the left side of the plate, hits for power and is able to spray the ball around as that ball is popped up into the gray sky and that ball is gonna be handled by the oh, first baseman, Dylan Joyce. He actually dropped that, but was able to recover, pick that ball up before it hit into the foul territory to record the first out of the inning. In steps, J.P. Heft. Heft comes into tonight's game hitting 359, playing second base for the Rebels. That ball is high and inside. The count goes 1-0. Oh. Hammond's given up 15 hits. As that ball is sim summarily, similarly hit just like Ryland Charles. First baseman, Dylan Joyce, goes over there, records a second out of the inning. And quickly, the Rebels are down two outs here in the bottom of the first inning. Up steps Isaac Rodriguez. Isaac Rodriguez moving into the DH spot tonight. Rodriguez has played a lot of second base. Hitting 357 for the Rebels. Is up fastball catches the outside part of the plate for a called strike. Irod comes in. As a transfer student, he's done a fantastic job, and that ball is swung on and missed. And Rodriguez quickly falls behind 0 and 2. The pitch, low and away. Good pitch by Hammond right there. He wasn't going to give Rodriguez anything in the zone, trying to get him to chase something. So the count's one and two with two outs here in the bottom of the first inning. Hammond puts big curveball tumbler over the top for a called strike. His first strike out of the game. Three up, three down for the Rebels. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. At the bottom of the first inning, no score. We'll head to the top of the second. Hustle and Rebel Baseball brought to you by UNLV Athletics and Learfield. Welcome back to Hustle and Rebel Baseball. This is Dan Dalby bringing you a nice night of baseball after two days of rain here in Las Vegas. Even with the field tarp, moisture was really bad, and this game was not going to get in until really heroic effort by the grounds crew here. As Joyce steps in, he takes a strike on the outside corner from Kate's. Count goes 0-1. Even with the tarp down, there was just so much no moisture. As Joyce swings on a fastball low and falls behind 0-2. Just the moisture from the elevations on the field, everything, all the water worked to the outside. As Joyce swings and misses, Austin Cates records his third strikeout very early in this game for a quick out. So in steps. For the Broncos, Malcolm, Malcolm Williams, shortstop. He takes a ball low and outside. Williams batting 281 on the season. Junior, 16 hits, nine runs scored. That fastball misses high and outside. Count quickly goes to 2-0. and As Cates delivers, that ball, that Changeup misses inside. That's been a very effective pitch for Cates. Really works in on the hands of a right-handed pitcher, but he missed a 
belt high just too far inside. Is that next pitch misses inside and he's delivered a four pitch count walk to Williams and he trots down to first base. Broncos have another runner on here in the second inning. Number 22, the DH, Johnny Lutzo, steps up. Okay. 143 on the season, freshman. One of the things that's interesting tonight, in the lineup for the Broncos, is that ball tumbles in the low zone for a called strike. The Broncos are starting six freshmen tonight. I don't think we've seen that many youngsters in a lineup this so far this year. Recent memory, actually. That ball is... Snap throw over to first. Williams easily back in. So head coach Rusty Filter going with six freshmen tonight. This counts 0-1. Cates throws over again to first base. William Williams has been successful two out of three times this year on stolen bases. So I'll keep a close eye on him. Try to keep him tight. Counts 0-1. As that fastball just misses down low. That evens up the count at one and one with one out here in the top of the second inning. Let's go, not a lot of appearances, played in five games this year, two starts. So he's getting his opportunity tonight. As that ball misses up in the zone and the count goes to two and one. So usually you don't see this many youngsters in a lineup until you get to midweek, but this being a non-conference series with the Broncos, they may try, be trying to get some guys a look. Another throw over to first base. Williams easily back in. Kate has a pretty good move from a right-hander. Got a little snap. Gets it over there very effectively. 2-1 count. Kate's that ball is low. And they're going to call a balk. They're going to call a balk on Kate's. Look like he didn't come to a full stop. That's what happens a lot of times for pitchers when they throw over multiple times to first, kind of rush to get the the plate. Didn't come to a full stop. Williams advances to second. The ball's way outside and the count goes to 3 and 1. So second time in consecutive innings, the Broncos have runners in scoring position. With the count being three and one. That's a called strike on the inside. Looked like Letzo was taking all the way. So with a full count right here. See what the offering is from Cates. As pickoff throw to second, and they just get under. Williams just beats that throw. That pickoff throw to second base over to J.P. Heff was to the second base side of the bag. If that had been a little more at the bag or towards short, probably been an easy out. Nonetheless, full count. That ball is just tipped into the dirt. Keep the count full. Good move by Heft right there, excuse me, Cates right there to get over to Heft. Heft makes a good tag down, but Williams dives back into the bag. Williams a tall kid, good looking player at shortstop. As that's going to be a called strike, and Cates is helping himself out now. That's his fifth strikeout of the game. So two outs here in the top of the second inning, and up to the plate steps. The left fielder, Peyton Lambert, another freshman hitting 167 coming into tonight's tilt. Cates checks Williams at second, delivers. That's a fastball that can't be caught up with. Count goes 0 and 1. Cates checks Williams again, no play on. Another fastball misses high and outside, and the count evens up at 1 and 1. Again, Cates has been really effective this season for the Rebels. He's been the, the guy that they count on on Friday nights, but with the rain out, 
getting the start here today as that ball misses low. The count goes to two and one with two outs here in the top of the first inning. Williams on second base, runner in scoring position for the Broncos. Kate's going to be looking, try to get out of this right now. Good pitch right there. That slider catches the outside part of the plate away from the right-handed hitting Peyton Lambert. And a lot of break on it. We're going to have to see what the metrics are on some of Kate's pitches here. As he throws another fastball right by Lambert to record his fifth. That is his fifth strikeout. So through two innings, Cates has allowed two runners, but he has struck out five at this point. So we're going to head to the bottom of the second inning. Broncos threaten to score again. Cates works out of a jam. As we head to the bottom of the second inning, no score. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by Learfield and UNLV Athletics. Welcome back to Hustlin' Rebel Baseball. As we head to the bottom of the second inning, I'm Dan Dolby. As Kate Higgins steps into the plate, the left-handed hitting Kate Higgins, batting 393 on the season, facing the right-handed Blake Hammond. That ball is low in the zone, just misses, and is taken for a ball to count 1-0. and Higgy, one of the more dangerous hitters for the Rebels, Hits for power, but can also go to all areas of the field. Been very effective. Leads the team in doubles this season with seven. So he takes another ball. Go ahead, 2-0. and oh. I think he slaps that one down the third baseline. That's going to take the count to 2-1. and one. I think he has 24 hits and has scored 16 runs. As that ball is fouled back to the fencing, that evens up the count 2-0. and oh. Good pitch by Hammond right there. Up and away from Higgins. Higgins, the left-handed hitting power hitter to the right side of the field. Wasn't able to turn on that one. Higgy will slap that ball into left field as that ball is hit off the fist, ends up in the netting and falls into the Bronco dugout. Count stays at 2-2. Two and two. No outs here in the bottom of the second inning. Hammond delivers, and that ball is low, and they're going to call him out on an appeal to the third base umpire. They're going to say he went around, and that's going to be another strikeout for Hammond. That's going to record the first out for the Rebels here in the bottom of the second. Austin Krizik, first baseman for the Rebels. Senior coming into the game, batting 362. Hammond delivers, and that slider is over for a called strike. Hammond's fastball right now, 87 to 90 miles an hour, and that fastball misses outside, low and away, even up the count. He's also throwing a curveball. It's topping out at about 81 to 82. So right now, Hammond, a two-pitch arsenal, and he's going to deliver to Krizik. As that ball's low, the count goes to two and one. Lights on here at early Wilson Stadium. Again, you would have said it would have been this nice tonight. As that ball slapped foul and the count goes to two and two. If you'd have said this was going to be this nice of a night yesterday or earlier today, I would have said that you would uh, you you might have been drinking a little bit because it was absolutely nasty here the last few days. We had high winds, rain, had snow in the foothills again. Yeah. As that ball misses, that curve ball is low and away, and the count's going to go full. So no wind to speak of at this point. 
Hammond delivers, and that ball is popped up down the first base line. That's going to work its way over into the Rebel bullpen. The count will stay three and two. Hammond is usually the Broncos' Friday night guy, but again, both pitching staffs take their Friday night guy and move. The, we were going to play a doubleheader today, so they probably would have pitched earlier today, but they're, all, they're both facing off tonight. As Hammond misses low and outside, Krizik is going to take his trot down to first base. Rebels have their first base runner of the evening in Austin Krizik. So following Krizik, Chase Dittmar, the Rebel third baseman, steps in. The freshman, batting 364, been a pleasant surprise for the Rebels this year. As that ball is down the middle for a called strike. Dittmar's done a great job behind the plate, but defensively he's been very surprising for Coach Higgins in the infield. And Stalwart over there at third base. So that ball is outside and away. Hammond a little off balance on that pitch, evens up the count. So Krizik, not a threat to run. Stay relatively close. And that's going to be a called strike right down the middle. So two good fastballs from Hammond this inning. Did fall off a little bit when he threw that curveball. He's working ahead one and two with one out here in the bottom of the second inning. Hammond. Blows it by Chase Dittmar for another strikeout by Hammond. And that's going to be the second out of the inning. Santino Panaro, the Hustlin' Rebels left fielder, steps in from the left side of the plate. Panaro batting 308. Got off to a real slow start. He's been able to heat things up. It's been really good since he's gotten to the lineup. Starting, was hitting some DH. That ball is fisted down to the third baseman. Third baseman relays over to first to record the out. Efren Monzo makes a good play, charging that ball to record the third out of the inning. Rebels, no hits, no runs, no errors, one left on base, and at the bottom of the second inning, no score. This broadcast brought to you by Learfield and UNLV Athletics. We'll come back shortly. Top of the third, no score. Welcome back to Hustle Rebel Baseball. Top of the third inning, no score here. Pitcher's duel at this point. Austin Cates, five strikeouts through two full innings. Up to the plate, the second baseman, Ben Cleary, freshman batting 189 as he takes a cold strike. Um, okay, I plugged it in, still not seeing it. That ball misses low and away. One of the things we've talked about through Austin Cates' starts is the pace that he works. Uh, Pitch clock never gets below 15. As that ball is hammered into right center, uh, Rylan Charles over there is not going to be able to get that. It gets all the way to the fence. We're going to have a play at third as he rounds across, and he's going to be out at third base. Great relay. That play went from center field to the shortstop. Paul Myro relaying over to Chase Dittmar at third. Wow, that was crazy. And Ben Cleary is going to be thrown out at third base. So that will go down as a double with a put out at third. So, yeah, the 
So great defensive play right there. Rylan Charles gets on his horse, picks up the ball at the 400 mark at the bottom of the wall, makes a great relay for the first out. Back to the top of the Bronco order. Michael O'Hara steps in from the left side of the plate. Count goes one and one. So good piece of hitting by the freshman, Ben Cleary right there. He's got a little aggressive on the base pass. That ball's tapped down the right field line and the count goes one and two. The relay was really good to the shortstop, Paul Myro, and he made a absolutely threw a dime over to Chase Dittmar and snaps down to get Cleary out at third. That ball is swung on a missed. That's going to be the second out, and that's going to be the sixth strikeout for Austin Cates. So two outs here. Nobody on for the Broncos after a double, but Cleary thrown out at third base. Up to the plate steps Coleman Brigman. Brigman takes low and inside. That's one of the things when the Rebels have been playing very well this year, the defense has really backed them up. Swung on a miss, and that count goes one and one. So Kate's very effective tonight, keeping the Bronco batters off balance. With the exception of that Cleary hit, that ball was absolutely hammered. That slider sneaks in on the hands of Brigman, and that's called strike. Counts one and two with two outs here in the top of the third inning. The ball almost hits Brigman. That changeup almost worked in onto the hip. Even up to count at two and two. That ball is ripped down the left field line. It is just foul out of the diving reach of Chase Dittmar. That ball was just foul. That would have been an extra base hit for Brigman. Keeps the count at two and two, so we're twos across. Two strikes, two balls, two outs here in the top of the third inning. Cates delivers, and that ball's popped up into shallow right. Higgins on his horse coming in and makes the running catch coming towards first base to record the third out of the inning. So Rebels defensively step up to support Austin Cates. Broncos are going to have no runs on the board with one hit, no errors, nobody left on base. We're going to head to the bottom of the third inning with no score. Welcome back to Hustle and Rebel Baseball, brought to you by Learfield and UNLV Athletics. I'm Dan Dolby. We're going to head to the bottom of the third inning. No score. Broncos did threaten. Double by Ben Cleary into the right center gap. But strong throw and relay was able to get him out at third base. So Cates works out of trouble with the help of his defense behind him. Brian Hammond, excuse me, Blake Hammond still towing the rubber for the Broncos. Hammond has 27 pitches through two innings, and he's going to face the catcher, Bailey Seeger. That first pitch is a fastball for a called strike. Seeger batting 379. Seeger has been really getting the workman's load for the Rebels behind the plate as that ball is going to miss low and inside. Been a huge addition to the Rebels. Transfer student, he's a senior this year. That ball is hit deep into center field into the gray sky, but that ball is going to be handled by the center fielder, Coleman Brigman, to record the first out of the inning. The so Hammond's been able to keep the Rebels at bay. The you know Rebels come into the game hitting 321, which is second in the Mountain West Conference, trailing New Mexico by 15 points. 
Paul Myro steps into the up to the plate, takes a ball one. Myro, the shortstop, junior for the Hustlin' Rebels, takes another pitch outside, and that ball that is going to be two and zero with one out here in the bottom of the third inning. Called fastball, take the count to two and one. Myro hitting two fifty six. But his defensive play has been stellar for the Hustlin' Rebels. That ball is pushed down the right field line. It's going to be out of play to even up the count at 2-2. Two and two. Myro actually experimented a little this year of moving behind the plate as the Rebels thought that they were going to need some help back there. But Bailey Seegers really stepped up. That ball is swung on a miss. Good curve ball by Hammond right there. In on the hands of Myro. Another strikeout for Hammond. That's going to be the second out of the inning. That's four strikeouts for Hammond tonight. He's going to get to the top of the order with Ryland Charles. Charles takes outside, looks like a changeup, misses outside. Catcher Steck might have been a little fooled on that. And they going to drop one down. It's going to work foul down the third base line. It's one of the things that Rylan Charles has a green light at any time to put the bunt down, depending on the alignment of the defense. I've actually seen over the years Rylan bunt on two strikes. Very, uh, very good bunter. A lot of speed coming out of the left side of the box. It's going to take the count to one and one. That ball's low. Peel down to third base umpire. Says no go, and the count goes to two and one. Ryland Charles, senior out of Reno High School up in Reno, Nevada. One of the, the only player from northern Nevada for the Hustlin' Rebels. So that changeup moves away out of the zone, and the count goes to three and one. Hammond delivers. That ball's inside. And that's going to be a two-out walk for Ryland Charles. J.P. Heft walking to the plate, trying to get something going here. Rebels still looking for their first hit of the inning. Had two runners on board via the walk. J.P. Heft will be looking to move them over, try to get something rolling for the Rebels with two outs. Hammond checks Charles, and that ball is popped up down the right field line. The left fielder, O'Hara, gets over there, makes the catch just inside the foul line, and records the third out of the inning. So the Rebels get a two-out walk, but strand Ryland Charles at first base. So after three complete, no runs, no hits, no errors, one left for the Rebels, and we'll head to the top of the fourth inning, 0-0. Welcome back to Hustle and Rebel Baseball, brought to you by UNLV Athletics and Learfield. So we head to the top of the fourth inning. Austin Cates, six strikeouts, heading here into the top of the fourth inning as he's going to face number 12, the third baseman, Efren Monzo. Monzo, the senior, came into the game hitting 371. So Best hitter in the lineup right now for the uh, for the Broncos as he takes a curveball for a called strike. Monzo struck out in his first at bat. Cates misses low and the count goes one and one. Again, we talked about the effectiveness of Austin Cates. It's that tempo that he works with. So that ball is slapped down the third base line. It's going to work his way foul and the count's going to go one and two. 
22nd pitch clock in D1 baseball. When you watch the clock, as soon as he gets on the mound, the clock starts. He's pitching with 15 seconds left to go each time as he misses outside on a curveball, and the count's going to go two and two. One of the things that we noted with Austin Cates is that pace. As that ball slapped over to short, Paul Myro picks up, low throw into the dirt, but Austin Krizik is able to pick that one out for the first out of the inning. Krizik over at first base. This is Krizik's first year at first base, and we have talked extensively about the defensive prowess of Austin Cates and what he's been able to do at first base for the Rebels, and it's been outstanding. So with one out, Cates delivers, and Ben Steck takes a ball outside. Excuse me, that's a called strike. That was a slow call by the home plate umpire. That ball is hammered foul, and the count quickly goes to 0-2. Again, Kate's working at a super high pace right now. That's when he's working at his best. As that ball is hammered down the left field line, but it's going to be foul. Just a long strike right there, and it keeps the count 0-2. But I really like the way that Austin Kate's keeps that pace going. It actually keeps the infield into the game also. So the ball's overthrown by Austin Case. Fastball misses low and outside. The count goes to one and two. Case just misses down low, and that evens up the count. Case 46 pitches coming into this inning. He's 90 to 92 on his fastball. As that ball swung on and missed in the dirt. Picked up by Seeger, tagged out, and that's going to be another strikeout. That's going to be the seventh strikeout for Austin Cates. With two outs here in the top of the fourth. So Austin Cates has done everything that he can possibly do to keep the Broncos at bay. Number 17, Ben Steck, the catcher, steps in. He's going to take a called strike. Steck. 6-2-2-18 from Mill Creek, Washington. He takes another called strike. And Cates is quickly ahead, 0-2. That ball slapped over to second base. That ball is easily picked up by Heft, relayed over to first. That Austin Krizik makes a put out at first. And we're going to have one, two, three down for the Broncos here at the top of the fourth. So the Rebels will be coming back in the bottom of the fourth inning, looking to get something going, trying to record their first hit. We'll be back shortly. This production brought to you by UNLV Athletics and Learfield. Welcome back to UNLV Hustlin' Rebel Baseball. Quite the pitcher's duel tonight. Austin Cates dealing for the Rebels. Seven strikeouts in four innings, but not to be outdone. Blake Hammond doing well for University of Santa Clara tonight. Hammond comes into this inning with 41 pitches through three innings, still right around the 89 mile an hour mark for his fastball as he's going to face Isaac Rodriguez, the DH for the Rebels. Hammond's pitch slider is missed by Isaac Rodriguez. Hammond goes ahead 0-1. Rodriguez, power hitter. He's got an opportunity to take this out of the ballpark at any time. That ball is low and in the dirt, and the count evens up at one and one. Rodriguez, a very big utility player for the 
hustling Rebels as he can play middle infield as well as filling that DH spot like he's doing tonight. And that ball is high inside, and the count goes to two and one. The Rebels were able to pull in quite a few utility players for themselves this year. Isaac being a big part of it. That curveball is going to tumble into the zone. It's going to be watched by Isaac, and the strike is going to even up the count at two and two. So with no outs here, Isaac Rodriguez trying to get something going for the Hudson Rebels. That ball is hit into right center. The right fielder is able to get over there. That's Michael O'Hara catches it off the top of his shoe. To shoe. Records a great out for the Broncos. That ball gets down. That's getting all the way to the fence. It'll be multiple bases for Isaac, but nonetheless, O'Hara makes a great play for the Broncos to record the first out of the inning. Kate Higgins steps up, takes a change up outside. Another utility player for the Hustle Rebs. He can play any of the outfielders as he rolls one over to second base that's easily handled by Ben Cleary and relays it over for the second out of the inning. So with two outs here, Rebels trying to get something rolling, have not been able to record a hit yet, have had two base runners on via the walk, but Hammond's been very effective for the Broncos. Austin Krizik will look to get something going. Krizik takes up and away just misses. That's going to be a ball. Count is 1 and 0. Krizik hammers one into right field. That ball is getting back to the fence. That ball is going to be out of here. That is an opposite field home run for Austin Krizik over the 375 mark here at Earl E. Wilson Stadium. And all of a sudden, the Rebels got something going via the home run from Austin Krizik. Great piece of hitting right there. Went down low and got a pitch that was away from him. And again, Krizik hits for power, but is able to go to opposite fields, and he shows the power there. So with one swing of the bat, Hustle and Rebels are up 1-0 here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Hammond delivers a strike to Chase Dittmar. Third baseman for the Rebels. Be looking to follow something up as he... Skies one down the right field line to even up the count at one and one. Dittmar hitting 359. Dittmar struck out his first at bat. Another pitch whiffed on by Dittmar. Ball's relayed over to first after the ball gets into the dirt, but Ben Steck is able to throw Dittmar out, and that's going to record the third out of the inning. But the Rebels do get something going on the home run by Austin Krizik. So as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning, the Rebels, one run on one hit, no errors, nobody left on base. The Rebels will head to the top of the fifth inning, leading one nothing. Fans, we're back here at Earl E. Wilson Stadium where the Rebels, via the long ball, take a 1-0 lead heading into the top of the fifth inning. Austin Krizik goes deep for the Rebels, only hit in the game, but so far that's all they've needed. 1-0 lead as we head here into the top of the fifth inning. Austin Cates returns to the mound for the Rebels. Malcolm McDowell will step in, the shortstop for the Santa Clara Broncos had a, a walk his first inning, was able to advance to second on a balk. Austin, excuse, Austin Cates misses high and outside. I was talking to Coach Vanderhoek earlier 
He was talking about Kate's doing somewhere around as that ball is slapped back to the netting, and it's going to be one and one. They're going to limit Austin Kate's to somewhere around the 80 pitch mark tonight. And the reason being is he's going to be pitching Friday night in Reno, so he's going to be on a short leash and a short uh, pitch count because they want him effective as they head into a conference game against the rivals from up north. That ball is hit into left field. Panaro comes over there, is able to get that at the waist level. So a ball hit hard by Williams, but Panaro in the right position over there to record the first out of the inning. So the th interesting thing about having a, a weekend series non-conference at this point after already having a weekend series where the Rebels were swept by New Mexico last weekend. Kate's misses outside to Johnny Lutzo. Freshman DH. Rebels got off to a, hard, hard, a really hot start. That ball misses inside and the count goes 2-0 to Lutzo. Rebels got off to a torrid start have hit the brakes here. You got to get off the snide as that ball's ripped down the left field line. It's going to be foul and the count's going to go to two and one. Rebels have lost six in a row. Probably one of the longest losing streaks I can remember in recent history. So we'll be looking to get things going tonight. As that ball is tumble it tumbles in the zone and the count goes to two and two. Lutzo was a strikeout victim in the second inning. That ball's low and in the dirt, and that's going to take the count full. Cates hasn't had it. This is only a second th full count. As that fastball is going to be low at the knees for a called strike, and that's going to be the eighth strikeout for Austin Cates. So working the count full, he's able to bounce back and get another strikeout to record the first out of the inning. Peyton Lambert steps in, the left fielder for the Broncos, squares to bunt, back to the pitcher. Cates makes a really nice play, takes his time, relays over to first, place, first base, and he's going to record the third out of the inning. So only a 10-pitch inning for Austin Cates. Very effective after recording his eighth strikeout. So quick inning for the Rebels. We're going to head into the t bottom of the fifth inning with the Rebels leading Santa Clara 1-0. We're back here for Hustlin' Rebel Baseball. Beautiful night here in Las Vegas after a few days of torrid rain, wind, sleet, some snow. Nice to get some baseball in tonight. Rebels head to the bottom of the fifth inning with a one nothing lead. Hammond back at the mound for the Broncos. Hammond's got 53 pitches through four innings as he delivers to Santino Panaro, who squares the butt but pulls back for a ball, and the count is 1-0. That changeup misses on the outside of the plate. Quickly, Panaro ahead, 2-0. That ball is low. Now, Santino's at a hitter's count. I would imagine with runs being a premium at this point, Going to keep the, ball, the bat on his shoulder, and he's going to miss inside. So a four-pitch walk from Hammond to Panaro. As Panaro heads down to first base with the first runner here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Rebels will be looking to generate some more insurance runs, only leading by one. At this point, Hammond and Cates have done a great job, so runs are going to be a premium for both teams. And we're going to get Bailey Seeger. Rebel catcher steps up to the plate. 
That ball is skied. Stays in the infield. First baseman Joyce calls off, and that ball is dropped into foul territory. That was weird play right there. The shortstop, excuse me, the third baseman, Monzo worked his way all the way over to the first base line, called off the first baseman, and that ball drops into foul territory for a strike. Should have been a recorded out, so the Rebels be looking to make that one hurt. The pitch fouled into the dirt. Count goes one and one. Panaro has not attempted a stolen base yet this year, and the Rebels have not really been a running team. One of the reasons is more than half their hits are for multiple bases. That ball is slapped into the netting behind home plate, and the count goes to one and two. So Hammond will be looking to help himself out after that ball fell into foul territory. Well, first baseman Joyce lost that. Snap throw over to first. Panaro back in. So the count's 0-2 on Bailey Seeger with no outs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Santino Panaro at first. Another throw over to first. Almost gets away. Good play by first baseman Dylan Joyce. Make sure that ball does not get by him because Panaro has easily been able to advance. Hammond from the stretch. That ball's low in the dirt. Panaro goes, and that ball is going to be high to second base. Short base, uh, shortstop Malcolm Williams is not able to get over there to make that play. That's going to be a wild pitch. Moving Santino Panaro into scoring position. That ball in the dirt. Good attempt by Ben Steck, the Bronco catcher, but he had to make a good play come up out of his crouch, not able to get Panaro. Seeger takes a ball up in the zone, and the count goes to two and two. So Panaro is short lead at second. Williams holding him close. Hammond delivers. And that ball is going to be hit. And that's going to get off the glove of Malcolm Williams at, set, at shortstop. And that's going to be an infield hit for Bailey Seeger. And that's going to put runners on first and second. That ball was not hit very hard. Williams had to work his way to the third base side of shortstop. Was not able to come up with that ball. I'm not sure he would have made, been able to record that out at first anyways. But nonetheless, Rebels got something going with two outs here in the bottom. Excuse me, two runners here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Paul Myro steps up. There's a bunt down right in front of the plate, and that's going to be a sacrifice. And that's going to be that's sacrifice. sacrifice. We'll have to check the scoring on that because Myro was able to get down there. The catcher Steck relayed over to first, but the throw was off the mark. And that's going to be a sacrifice for Paul Myro, and they're going to give the air to the catcher, Ben Steck. That's going to load the bases here for the Rebels back to the top of the order with Ryland Charles. So all of a sudden, Hammond's in trouble here in the bottom of the fifth with no outs and the bases juiced. Good pitch right there. Good bounce back pitch. That curveball works over the top of the zone, tumbling in at the hands of Ryland Charles. Count goes 0-1. Ryland Charles. That ball is hit down the right field line, but well foul. Hammond works ahead of Ryland Charles 0-2. So he'll be looking to try to help himself out. Looks like we have a little activity in the Bronco bullpen. Doesn't look like they're really working at a fast pace. So this is Hammond's job right now. As that ball's rolled over, and that ball is going to be handled by the pitcher Hammond. That's going to be a, in, a fielder's choice as the runner from third, Panaro, is able to easily come in to score. Hammond... Took that ball on his own as the first baseman, Joyce, broke towards the pitching mound. Hammond had to get over there and record the out by himself. 
easily advancing the runners. So J.P. Heft with one out here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Runners on second and third, one out. One out. Be looking to try to get some more on the board for the Hustlin' Rebels as that curveball misses high and inside. Hammond looking to work himself out of a jam here. Falling behind two to nothing. That ball is a strike on the outside zone. Rebels only have two hits at this point, but two runs. Been able to generate via the walk. And that ball's hit hard into the right field gap, past the diving Ben Cleary at second base. That's gonna score two runs. Great piece of hitting right there by J.P. Heft. Score two more for the Rebels. So the Rebels are gonna be up four nothing. Got something going here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Nice piece of hitting. And you're gonna get a break to second base and that ball's gonna be thrown into the outfield. What a heads up play by J.P. Heft. He saw that the pitcher Hammond was not paying attention. Nobody covering the base. As he breaks towards second, Hammond throws over the head of Williams at second and that advances J.P. Heft all the way to third base into scoring position. So heads up play right there by the second baseman, J.P. Heft. Delivers on a base hit to score two runs, but also is able to advance to second. And then a throwing error by the pitcher allows him to get to third. And we do have a mound visit right now from the Broncos pitching coach. Don't see a lot of movement still going on yet in the Bronco bullpen. He's going to head back to the dugout. And this is going to be Hammonds to continue. Isaac Rodriguez steps up to the plate for the Rebels, looking to keep this thing rolling. Rodriguez is 0 for 2 tonight with one strikeout. Be looking to try to get that fifth run here for the Rebels. So that ball is punched down the right field line. That's going to be out of play. So that was actually the third hit for the Rebels. Heff takes his lead at third. That ball's popped down the right field line. Looks to stay in play, but does tails foul. Good effort by the right fielder, Michael O'Hara. He just ran out of room as that ball got into the bullpen of the Hustlin' Rebels. But Hammond works ahead against Isaac Rodriguez, 0-2 here. One out, runner on third. Rebels leading 4-0. And the pitch, good curveball by Hammond right there. Really helped himself out. Rodriguez swung over the top of that thing to, for his second strikeout of the game. So we're going to get a pitching change at this point. Looks like the Broncos are going to bring in a left-hander to face the left-handed hitting Cade Higgins. But the damage has been done so far this inning in the bottom of the fifth as the Rebels have been able to plate three more runs after Austin Krizik's home run in the fourth inning, we've got three across here in the bottom of the fifth. We're going to get a pitching change. We'll come back to you, give you the numbers, let you know who's towing the mound for the Broncos. This is production brought to you by UNLV Athletics and Learfield.
Welcome back to Running Rebel, excuse me, Hustling Rebel Baseball. Running Rebel Basketball still going on. Tournament's over, but the Hustling Re Re Running Rebels still have an opportunity to play postseason. We'll give you a little bit of that information later. As Brandon Gomez steps to the mound as that ball is rolled over. First pitch swinging. Kate Higgins is going to roll out one pitch, one out from Brandon Gomez. So he does his job, but the damage is done. So the Rebels were able to get three runs on two hits, two errors, nobody left on, and the Rebels will head to the top of the sixth inning with a 4 nothing lead. This production brought to you by UNLV Athletics and Learfield. Fans, welcome back to Hustlin' Rebel Baseball. I'm Dan Dolby. This production brought to you by UNLV Athletics and Learfield. So we head to the top of the sixth inning. Austin Cates returns for his sixth inning of work on 72 pitches thus far. Got some all-important runs to back up his great effort tonight. Austin has eight strikeouts. It's only one ball given up two hits tonight. So he's really done a good job holding the Broncos at bay. As Cates delivers, and that ball is going to be a called strike. This is Ben Cleary as he hammers one down the right field line. It's going to work foul. Cates quickly works ahead. 0-2. Oh Cleary rolls over to second base. Ball is easily handled by half. Relayed over for the first out of the inning. Kate's working at a high pace like we talked about. Been able to keep that pitch count down. If he can kind of keep this thing right around the 80, 82 pitch mark this inning, you may see him for another inning of work. So back to the top of the lineup for the Broncos. O'Hara hits one into right field, and that ball is going to be down as Kate Higgins dives, not able to come up with that, and that's going to be a one-out double for Michael Omar O'Hara. O'Hara did a really good job from the left side of the plate right there. Good effort by Higgy in right field, but he's not able to catch up with that ball. Ryland Charles gets over there, helps back up, get the ball back into the infield. Keeps O'Hara at second base. The Broncos got something rolling here in the top of the sixth inning. Brigman steps up, and he swings and misses. And a slider from Austin Cates. Austin Cates has had... This will be his third runner at second base, but he's been able to work out of the previous two. Pitch, that's a called strike on the outside part of the plate. Just catches the black, and that quickly goes to 0-2 with one out here, runner in scoring position for Santa Clara. Austin Cates, a pickoff at second base. J.P. Heff gets over there, but... O'Hara is easily back in as he goes back in standing up. So Kate's 0-2. And that ball is going to be swung on and missed for another strikeout for Austin Cates. It's going to be his ninth strikeout of the game. So 
So Brian Menza will try to get something going here for the Broncos with a man in scoring position, but Austin Cates dealing at this point. He throws a slider that's swung on a miss by Monzo. Cates checks the runner at second. That's going to be a slider. It's going to be in the dirt. Slider's been the go-to pitch tonight for Austin Cates, and he backs that up and sneaks a fastball by you. That's why he has nine strikeouts tonight. That's the slider right there. That ball starts in on the hands of a right-handed hitter and works away all the way across the plate. It's got about a 10 to 12 inch break on that. Not much of that's vertical. The ball's low in the dirt. As O'Hara thought about going, but a good stop behind the plate by Bailey Seeger. So they throw that ball in as tonight, we talked about the weather. There still is some heavy dirt, which you would call that. So there's gonna be some marks on the balls that are in the dirt. Cates throws a fastball, and that's going to be another called strike for his 10th strikeout of the game. So Austin Cates gives up a double, but works out of trouble here in the top of the sixth inning. Outstanding effort by Austin Cates, the Rebels' ace. This is why he's the Friday night guy, even on a Saturday night. So as we're going to head into the bottom of the sixth inning, the Rebels are going to be take the lead into the bottom of the sixth inning, four to nothing. Broncos had no runs on one hit, no errors, one left on base. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by UNLV Athletics and Learfield. We head back into Rebel Baseball here at Earl E. Wilson Stadium on the campus of UNLV. Rebels will head into the sixth inning with a four-run lead. Brandon Gomez comes back out after only pitching one, one, out, one pitch last inning for the third out of the inning. He faces Austin Krizik. Gomez misses low. Count goes 1-0. and oh. Gomez has is a lefty, has a real low crouch to start. That ball's gonna miss low, that looks like a slider. Just misses low and inside. He's got that approach where he gets his left hand down to the ground, right, his glove on his right knee. Big swing right there by Austin Krizik, way out in front of that one as that curveball, Gomez was able to pull the string on that one and Krizik was way out in front of it. Counts one and one. Excuse me, two and one. That's hammered up the middle. That's going to be another base hit for Austin Krizik. So he follows up his home run in the fourth inning with a line drive single over the head of Gomez. And the Rebels have a leadoff batter in on here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Chase Dittmar looking for his first hit of the night steps in. Rebels will be looking to get to that all important five run lead. Four is great, but five, so much better. You have a lot more confidence heading out to the mound if you're Austin Cates. Chase Dittmar watches that one at the knees for a cold strike. So Krizik, with that single, takes his batting average to 382. As Dittmar fouls that one back to the, stand, to the, to the fence. If you look at the lineup for the Rebels, you got J.P. Heff hitting 354, Rodriguez 345, Higgins 387, Krizik 362, 
Dittmar 356, Panaro 300, Seeger 357. As Dittmar rolls over on that one, that's a tailor-made double play right there. That was rolled 6-4-3 double play. Malcolm Williams starts it out, relays over to Ben Cleary, and he makes the throw to first for the double play to get at the Austin Krizik, the leadoff batter out. Now there's quickly two outs here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Austin Krizik, or excuse me, Santino Panaro steps up, lefty on lefty matchup. We talked about those averages. As that ball just misses Panaro on the left shoulder. Y y you look at those batting averages. There's seven guys in a row hitting over 300. As Panaro is going to punch this one down. It's going to work its way foul. It's going to even up the count at one and one. So if you're a pitcher, you're coming in here. I don't care if you're a starter, you're a reliever, you're a midweek guy, or you're a Friday night guy. That's murderer's row right there with seven guys in a row batting over 300 and a number of those hitting over 350. So Gomez working here in the bottom of the sixth, one and one against Panaro. Good fastball watched by Panaro and the count goes one and two. This would be really big for the Broncos and Brandon Gomez to work out of this after giving up an Single and start the top of the inning. Panaro punches this one out of play, and the count remains one and two with two outs here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Rebels hold a four nothing lead over the Santa Clara Broncos. The pitch. It's a curveball that doesn't break, stays up in the zone, and the count goes two and two. Panaro, two years ago as a freshman, was the sixth hardest out in college baseball. Looking to be get back to that form. As he swings and misses, that's going to be a strikeout for Brandon Gomez, who was able to get out of the inning after giving up a leadoff single. So we're going to head to the top of the seventh inning. We'll see if Austin Cates returns for his seventh inning. And we'll get that set for you here as the Hustlin' Rebels lead Santa Clara Broncos 4-0 heading into the top of the seventh inning. Coming back for the top of the seventh inning, the Hustlin' Rebels are going to have a pitching change. Jesus Gonzalez will now step in for Austin Cates after Austin Cates delivers a spectacular outing for the Hustlin' Rebels tonight. Here are the final numbers on Cates. Six innings pitched, three hits, no runs, one base on balls, 10 strikeouts. So an outstanding effort by Austin Cates to get the Rebels rolling tonight, trying to get a win after losing their last six ball games. And that's the type of outing right there that gives you the confidence in the dugout, the bullpen, and as a coaching staff to get things rolling again. Jesus Gonzalez comes in with a 1.13 ERA. He's 0-1 on four appearances. Eight in innings pitched. He's only given up five hits and one run. He does have 10 strikeouts to only one free pass. So Rebels will be looking for Gonzalez to finish this one out tonight. He's a multiple guy inning guy as his fastball is over. That's going to be a called strike to the catcher, Ben Steck. Steck. Fouls that one back to the padding behind home plate. And Gonzalez quickly 
Gets ahead 0-2. Gonzalez has come in multiple times with leads this year and worked multiple innings. So he's a guy that is going to be a workhorse as that ball is fouled away. Barely got a piece of that one. Steck stays alive. Count stays 0-2. Gonzalez, kind of fastball that ranges 91 to 93, but he's got a really nice changeup to keep batters off balance. As Gonzalez delivers, and he's just going to miss. They are going to say he did go around. He tried to check his swing. First base umpire appeal says he does go around. So that's Gonzalez's first strikeout of the inning, the 11th strikeout for Rebel pitchers tonight. Dylan Joyce steps in against Gonzalez. Righty-righty matchup. Gonzalez got some velocity tonight. We'll have to get some numbers on him. Gonzalez also works at a very fast pace, just like Cates does. The ball's hit into the stands, and the count quickly goes one and one. Dylan Joyce, 0 for 2 tonight with one strikeout. As Gonzalez is cleaning off his cleats. Got some heavy dirt out there. You see the pitchers do that a lot tonight. Next pitch is a curveball. Just caught up with, and that's going to take the count to 1 and 2. So Dylan Joyce, the freshman, did come into the night hitting 345. Good looking kid for the Broncos. Hitting 345 as a freshman, it's got a heck of a future for them. If that ball is high, doesn't tumble back into the zone, the count goes two and two. Joyce, 6'4, 245, out of San Rafael, California. Did play a year at Puget Sound, D3 school up. In Washington, as that ball is missed inside, and the count's going to go three and two. So it does come to the Broncos after spending one year at Puget Sound with four years of eligibility. And that's going to be a cold strike on the outside. That's a fastball that just paints the edge. And that's going to be a second strikeout for Jesus Gonzalez. It's quickly two down. It's Malcolm Williams, the Broncos shortstop, steps in trying to get something going for the Broncos as they trail 4 nothing. That slider right there, good pitch in on the hands of Williams who fouls it back into the fencing. That last strike was 92 miles an hour from Jesus. The kick, another fastball just misses off the outside. The count goes one and one against Malcolm Williams, the Broncos' second baseman, who's 0 for 1 tonight with a walk. Good slider right there, misses just low. The count goes two and one. So here in the top of the seventh inning, two outs for the Broncos, no base runners. Rebels lead 4 nothing. Rebels have generated the four hit, four runs on four hits. That changeup is going to miss inside to take the count two and two. One of the things the Rebels have been able to do tonight is generate runs via sacrifice, a couple errors by the Broncos, a few walks, home run, and timely hitting. And that's going to be a called strike. Count goes three and two. So Williams down. Three and two here with two outs here in the top of the seventh inning. Gonzalez delivers. That's going to be another called strike low and outside on the corner. And that's three strikeouts for Isaac Rodriguez. That's going to make 13 strikeouts for the Rebel pitchers tonight, keeping the Broncos at bay. We're going to head to the bottom of the seventh inning with the Hustle Rebels looking to tack on some more insurance runs. We'll come back shortly. 
This production brought to you by UNLV Athletics and Learfield. We're back here for the bottom of the seventh inning for Hustlin' Rebel Baseball. Brandon Gomez back on the mound for the Broncos. Bailey Seeger hits one deep into right field off the first pitch, and that ball is caught at the base of the fence by Michael O'Hara. That ball carried a long way, just not enough to get out of the ballpark. As O'Hara is able to get over there and record the first out on one pitch, Paul Myro steps to the plate. We do have a new left fielder for the Broncos. It's going to be Jordan Lewis. As Gomez misses way outside to Paul Myro. Paul Myro put down one heck of a sacrifice bunt last at bat. Really got things going for the Rebels. As he swings and misses on a curveball from Gomez. The count goes one and one with one out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Rebels leading four nothing. Gomez, fastball, beaten into the dirt by Myro. Gomez works ahead, one and two. Rebels came in tonight as a team. We talked about that, hitting 321. That ball's low and outside, take the count to two and two. ERA as a team for the Broncos, 5.01. In comparison, the Rebels are 5.17, so very similar ERAs on the staff, but it's the batting averages is that ball's inside and gets all the way back to the padding. The count goes three and two. When you're looking at batting averages, you have a team batting average of 321 coming into the night for the Rebels. Broncos hitting 287, and it's showing tonight as that ball is hit down the left field line. This is gonna be multiple bases. As Lewis gets over there to cut it off, Paul Myro is going to get it into second base, standing up, and that's going to be a one-out double for Paul Myro, the fourth. Good piece of hitting right there. We had a lefty-righty matchup. Paul Myro, the right, uh, right hit, right-handed hitter, rips one down the left field line right at the base of the 30, 335 mark in left field. Stands at second with a runner in scoring position. Back to the top of the Rebel lineup with Ryland Charles. Ryland 0 for 2 tonight. Does have a walk and an RBI and takes a called strike. A little commotion down in the Bronco bullpen. But at this point, looks like Gomez is going to be able to keep towing the mound for the Broncos as that ball is missed badly by Charles. That's a good pitch by Gomez. That slider works low and away, and Charles is over the top of it, quickly falls behind 0-2. Pitch, another slider. Charles way out in front of that one, and that's going to be a strikeout for Brandon Gomez to get the second out of the inning. Rebels with Paul Myro at second base, trying to tack on to the 4-0 lead that they hold right now in the bottom of the seventh inning. And they'll look to Isaac Rodriguez, or excuse me, J.P. Heff. As that curveball works into the zone for a cold strike. Heff, one for three tonight with two RBI and a stolen base.
Gomez delivers, and that's going to be a check swing that's going to be called a strike. B.J. Heff falls behind 0-2. So Gomez, after giving up that double to Paul Myro, the fourth, will look to get out of this one, try to record the out here and get back to the dugout. That ball is low and inside. Good waste pitch by Gomez right there. Almost got J.P. Heff to chase on that one. Pretty sizable lead from Paul Myro at second base. Something into the gap. He'll probably be able to score. So that ball's hit up to the middle, just like we talked about. That's a two-bouncer over the head of Gomez, and that's going to be a single for J.P. Heft and another RBI as Paul Myro is able to come all the way around from second base on a ball not hit really hard, but a two-bouncer works over the head of the pitcher and over the head of the second baseman, excuse me, the shortstop, Williams, Paul Myra with that big league lead is able to come back around and score. And the Rebels now lead 5-0. Rebels record their sixth hit there. Now Isaac Rodriguez steps up. Rodriguez 0 for 3 tonight on two strikeouts. Be looking to get something going. Been a more effective hitter than 0 and 3 on two strikeouts so far this season. He takes a called strike on the outside. So JP Heft again. Transfer student coming in, being one of the leaders offensively for the Hustlin' Rebels. Is that ball slapped into right field, right out of the outstretched arms of the first baseman, Joyce. And Heft is going to get all the way around to third on another single by the Rebels. Isaac Rodriguez takes one opposite field right there. Sharp hit a, sharp, sharply hit by the first baseman. And with that, Heft is able to motor around to third, so the Re Rebels have runners at the corners with two outs here in the bottom of the seventh, and up to the plate steps, Cade Higgins. Higgins hitting 387 for the Rebels, looking for his first hit of the night as he takes high and inside for a ball. The count goes to 1-0. Lefty-lefty matchup. That ball misses low and outside. Gomez a little off balance on that one. Is threw a slider and kind of fell towards the third base side of the pitching mound. Falls behind 2-0. Higgy sharply hit. That ball is come up with by the second baseman, Ben Cleary, and he's going to record the out at first. But some more damage done by the Hustlin' Rebels. They add one more to the board on two, hit, two hits, no errors, two men left on. We're going to head into the top of the eighth inning with the Rebels leading 5 nothing. This broadcast brought to you by UNLV Athletics and Learfield. We're back here at Earl E. Wilson Stadium on the campus of UNLV Athletics where the Hustlin' Rebels head into the top of the eighth inning with a 5-0 lead. They're able to generate one more run last inning. To get that all-important fifth run that we talked about, Isaac Rodriguez returns to the mound for the Hustlin' Rebels. Santa Clara Broncos will be looking to get something going tonight as they've only been able to record three hits Rebel pitching staff with Austin Cates and Isaac Rodriguez have been absolutely stellar tonight. And we're going to get number 10, Caden Thompson, coming in as a pinch hitter for the Broncos. Thompson, a freshman, be facing... Flamethrower Rodriguez, is that, that ball is 
way outside, just held on to by Bailey Seeger. We talked about the effectiveness of Rodriguez been able to work ahead in the count. So that ball is going to miss high and tight. It's really the first time that he's fallen behind in the count to a Bronco batter as he struck out the side in the seventh inning. That ball is looped to right. Higgy all the way over there on the apron to record that out. That does look like a routine play, but I will tell you that that dirt out there this morning was soup. I'm not sure how soft it is right now, but as Higgy made that catch, he looked down at his feet. So he probably left some foot imprints on the apron down there and right, but regardless, great play, going a long way to record that out. So one out here in the top of the eighth inning. Jordan Lewis, who came in as a defensive replacement in left field, steps up to the plate. Quickly works ahead against Gonzalez, 2-0. and oh. The ball is fouled back to the padding on the fence behind home plate. The count goes two and one. The 2-0 count, Broncos looking to get something going. Lewis might have chased something out of the zone right there to get Gonzalez to strike. And that's going to be a cold strike right at the knees of Lewis. And Jesus works back from a 2-0 count to even it up at twos. One out here in the top of the eighth. Good pitch right there, and that ball is hammered down the gap in right center. Ryland Charles makes a big effort, dives over, backed up by Higgy, but the ball got all the way to the fence, and Lewis is at second base with a stand-up double. Good piece of hitting by the youngster right there. With a 2-2 count, he took a slider that was worked low and away, went opposite field, and that flared away from Ryland, Char Ryland Charles in center field. Did make a good effort, but the play was Kate Higgins going, getting over there to back that up to keep Lewis at second base. Broncos have runner in scoring position at second with one out. And that's a fastball that's going to be called for a strike. That's Ben Cleary at the plate. Cleary is one for two, had the double, but thrown at it third, trying to stretch it. And that ball is into left field. And it's going to be down in front of Panaro. Panaro quickly gets the ball in, and that's going to be a single with Lewis having to stop at third base. The ball not hit real deep into left field. Panaro got on his horse, was able to come up with that on one bounce, make a strong throw in. So the Rebels, excuse me, the Broncos just looking for base runners at this point. No sense in getting thrown out at the plate down by five runs. So runners at the corners, and we're going to have the top of the order. Michael O'Hara steps in, lefty-righty matchup. And that ball is popped into center field, shallow. Not sure that's going to be deep enough. Runner fakes, works back to third base. Ryland Charles came up and made that play on a ball not hit that deep to center field. And again, Lewis looked like he was going to take off, but got back to third base as Ryland Charles has a good arm in center field. That would have been a good play at home plate. That's two outs now here in the top of the eighth inning. Gonzalez trying to work out of a jam with runners on the corners, but now two outs. With Coleman Brigman stepping up. He fouls one down off his foot. Gonzalez works ahead, 0-1. Coleman Brigman, one for three on the night with one strikeout. Looking to get something going here for Santa Clara Broncos. They have five hits, but no runs tonight. And that's a fastball. 
That fastball right there is 92-93 now for Gonzalez. Might have thrown that one with a little, uh, little anger. He's trying to work out of a jam here. The pitch. Strike three. Swung on and missed by Bregman. And that's going to be another strikeout for Gonzalez as he pumps his arms as he heads off the mound. The Rebels are going to head into the bottom of the eighth inning with a five-run lead. It's going to be no runs on one, excuse me, two hits, no errors, two left on base. And as we head to the bottom of the eighth inning with the Rebels looking to get some more on the board, they lead 5-0. All right, fans, welcome back to Hustlin' Rebel Baseball here on the campus of UNLV Athletics where the Hustlin' Rebels are looking to get off the schneid after losing their last six ball games. They lead the Santa Clara Broncos 5-0 as we head into the bottom of the eighth. Brandon Gomez is going to return to the mound for the Broncos. Little activity out in the Bronco bullpen. They'll try to keep this thing at five. Work something at the bottom of the night. Try to get some magic going. But at this point, they're going to be facing one of the hottest hitters on the West Coast in Austin Krizik. Krizik takes high. Krizik tonight homered. Line drive single. So he's two for two tonight with a run scored and an RBI with a walk. That curveball misses low and outside, and the count goes 2-0. and One of the things you don't want to do is fall behind against a hitter like Austin Krizik. Krizik, no batting gloves, reaches down, grabs some dirt, rubs it into the handle of the bat. So he faces Gomez. He swipes at that one. That one's going to be popped up into the stands behind third base. Gomez, 2-1 count against Krizik with no outs here. Gomez, his task is to keep running, uh, hustling Rebels off the base. Can't fall behind by more than five at this point. As a good pitch by Gomez. That fastball blows right by Krizik. Big hack. Count goes 2-2. Two and two. Gomez crouches. And delivers. That ball's inside. That looks like a changeup just in on the belt of Krizik, and the count goes three and two. Oh, that's going to be a check swing that they're going to call that he went around, and that's going to be a strikeout for Gomez for that all-important first out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. So Krizik goes down on strikes with Chase Dittmar coming up. Talked about the running Rebels a little bit. Running Rebels did lose to San Diego State the other night, but are hoping for a postseason bid. They'll wait as Dittmar rips that one down, left field line foul. So as the running Rebels wait to see what their postseason fate is, we do know that the Lady Rebels will be getting a bid tomorrow at 4.30. Just have to see where they're going to go. Big swing by Dittmar on that slider, and he falls behind 0-2. So the Lady Rebels, 31-2 on the season. We're looking for a pretty decent seed, hopefully not too far away, as Dittmar pops that one into right field. O'Hara underneath it, and he records a second out of the inning. Lady Rebels... Back to back to back Mountain West Conference champions. Last two years they've been in the NCAA round of 64. We know they're going to be there this year looking to get a good seed.
try to advance past that first game for the first time in three years. Santino Panaro steps up and he takes a curveball. That's a called strike. Gomez, another strike, fastball, watched by Panaro to fall behind 0-2. The pitch, swung on and missed. Gomez strikes out another hustling rebel for the third out of the inning. So we're gonna head to the top of the ninth inning. Hopefully this will be the last half for the hustling rebels. See who comes back out to the mound if it's Isaac Gonzalez again. But the rebels hold a five run lead heading into the top of the ninth. We'll set the pitching battery as we come back after a short break. Okay, Hustlin' Rebel fans, we head to the top of the ninth inning. The Rebels holding a 5 nothing lead over Santa Clara Broncos. Looking to close this one out. Shutout for the pitching staff would be outstanding after six consecutive losses. This would be a good way to get back on track. Isaac Gonzalez does come back out to the mound. Gonzalez has worked two full innings on 31 pitches. He's given up two hits, but he has four strikeouts. That would make 14 strikeouts for the battery of Austin Cates and Isaac Rodriguez. So looking to get something going for the Broncos would be Efren Monzo. Monzo is 0 for 3 with two strikeouts tonight. Righty righty matchup. That ball is Lifted foul behind home plate. Gonzalez works ahead 0-1. Rebels five runs on seven hits, no errors tonight. So Gonzalez delivers. That's a curveball that's hit sharply over to third base. And that's gonna be relayed over to first. Good play by the third baseman, Chase Dittmar. Strong throw over to first to record that first out here in the top of the ninth inning. So one out. Ben Steck steps up for the Broncos. That overhand fastball misses high and outside. Bronco catcher looking to get something going. 0 for 3 tonight with three strikeouts. As he misses on a fastball. The count goes one and one. Gonzalez pitches. That's another fastball that swung on a miss by Steck. The count is one and two. Gonzalez delivers. That's a fastball that's fisted back behind home plate. The count stays one and two. Gonzalez. Throwing primarily fastballs to Steck. He's not been able to catch up with him. Wouldn't be surprised if he pulls the string on this one. But he's really confident right now with that fastball. Working away from the right-handed pitchers. That's going to be a slider that's going to be swung on a miss in the dirt. And that ball is going to be thrown over by Bailey Seeger to record the out at first base. But nonetheless, another strikeout for Isaac Rodriguez. It's his fifth strikeout. Broncos down to one out here in the top of the ninth inning. Isaac Rodriguez looking to keep runners off the base, keep that shutout intact for the Hustlin' Rebels. 
as that fastball to Dylan Joyce is taken for a strike. Gonzalez delivers. The ball's in the dirt, blocked by Seeger, but gets away from him. Joyce is 0 for 3 and has been a strikeout victim twice. There's been a lot of strikeout victims for the Broncos tonight as they fanned 15 times against Rebel Pitching. The count one and one with two outs. Gonzalez delivers, and that ball is hammered. One hopper by Paul Myro, short relay over to first base, strong throw. That short hop right there was a great play by Paul Myro, and that's gonna record the last out here in the ninth for a Rebel victory. So good night for the Hustlin' Rebels as they've battled back from six straight losses to record a shutout here at Earl E. Wilson Stadium against the visitors, Santa Clara Broncos from California. Rebels gotta be feeling really good, both from their approaches at the plate and the stellar performance tonight on the mound from the, Re the Rebel pitchers. Rebels will be back tomorrow at 12.05 first pitch. Again, facing the Santa Clara Broncos. There will not be a double header. This will just be a two game series for the, for the non-conference series. Here's the final numbers tonight. Santa Clara had five hits, no runs, two errors. The Rebels score five on seven hits, but if you look at seven hits, pitching staff for the Rebels was able to deliver 15 strikeouts. So a stellar performance from the Hustlin' Rebels here at home on a Saturday night. We'll be looking to come back tomorrow, St. Patrick's Day. Be wearing your green, be wearing your green tomorrow, but we'll be looking to have another Hustlin' Rebel victory at 12.05. We're gonna close this out tonight from Earl E. Wilson Stadium here on the campus of UNLV where your Hustlin' Rebels beat the Santa Clara Broncos 5-0. I'm Dan Dalby, wishing you a good night. This production brought to you by UNLV Athletics and Learfield.